right, it is a new day and it is a new week and we are in the shop working. We've got Lizzie back. How was your weekend? It was good. I just drove cows. You probably already noticed that we don't have Matt with us. Jamie bought him a Corvair a while back and him and Jamie flew up to Montana, drove to Wyoming, picked up the car and they're driving it back. And we're kind of on call. If he has any trouble, we've got to head up there and go get him. So back in December, Matt's birthday, Matt had showed us this car and he decided he shouldn't get it because what did he need? One more Corvair? So Hefe and I secretly went behind his back and bought it. They did, and they surprised me. Okay, so this gentleman sent me his number, so I'm gonna give him a call. I'm gonna ask him some questions about this car. Hello, this is Matt. I think I've been messaging you about a 61 Lakewood wagon. Yeah, correct. Just a couple questions. I, I mean, all I've got is the pictures that you sent. I don't know a whole lot about the car, but I did have uh, somebody this morning that called me and uh, actually made me a pretty good offer, so I think I'm gonna take that. Oh, all right. But I, sorry about that. Okay. I just let you know. All right, good enough. Right. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bummer. I'm a little bit bummed. This thing was super clean looking. But I waited too long. I waited over a month. I poked and prodded you to call that guy. I asked you about it, and you didn't. I know. You got to strike while the iron's hot. Dang it. <laughs> All right. Well. On to the next car. <laughs> All right. Did, I you, meet did you really need it anyways? Of course I do. Really? Jay Leno has like 500 cars. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys are messing with me. So we bought the car for you. <sighs> well, thank you. It's most, you. Mostly Hefe. I'm not going to kiss him, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie snuck your phone, <laughs> figured out where the guy was from, and found the, your contact information. We looked him up on Facebook, and we bought the car already. Well, thank you, mm -hmm. I guess. Happy late birthday. Yeah. Holy smokes. Corvair wagon. That's it. It's Chevy's 1961 Corvair Lakewood station wagon. Well, like Tom said, we are up here in uh, Wyoming and we just picked up a 1961 Chevrolet Corvair Lakewood wagon. It's a model 500. It's the base model. The gas gate doesn't work, so I'm right at home. <laughs> I forgot how low to the ground these are because the last Corvair wagon I was in was the Morvair and it's way taller than this. It drives nice. It's quiet. It started up, like, almost right up. Yeah. How many miles do we have to go? 650 miles. <laughs> How many days do you think it's going to take us? Two. I say we'll be home tomorrow night, Monday night. All right. First stop is the auto parts store. We're going to get some supplies to make sure that we have what we need get home. Take a socket set. There's that set. Just gonna put some of this in it. What is that? What you doing? Trying to get <laughs> tail lights. This is reminding me of another trip. Yeah, it is. That we like, had, that we did had no tail lights. Go see if we have tail lights now. That would be a negative. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump straight from the battery to here. We'll have to disconnect it, so the tail lights will always be on, as long as this wire's connected. 
and we're gonna see if that will work for us. Got tail lights. All right, that's it. Let's hit the road, Jamie, before something else bad happens. So Matt lined out some stuff for us to do on the banana. And the first thing is to tie these two shock towers or strut towers together so that when the banana's bouncing around, they don't flex and eventually crack. First things first, we gotta find some parts to do this. So let's go scrounge around the yard and see what we can find. Everything in here is looking too big, but I think we have some smaller stuff up on top of the other connects. This one, this one is the same. This piece looks just right. Thirty-six inches. It's got to be low enough that the hood can close but high enough it's not bonking the engine. So it's gonna need a bend in the middle is what I'm saying. We're just gonna build it and see if it fits and if it doesn't fit, we'll just build it again. Because that seems like the matte thing to do. Oh, they're bending. Every day is a good day when I get to fire up Sally. I love this. You can just dial in whatever RPM you want. Look at that. Let's do 700. Now let's go slower. 476, that's what we're gonna do. I am trying to be Matt today. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Matt just told me that this is cruising speed for us to get home. And I just, I just downloaded our GPS app to see how fast we were going. What do you, how fast do you think we're going? We're going 45 miles an hour. Oh my God. How did you know that? Oh, oh wow. We're at 46. I thought we'd be going like at least 60 to get home. It's gonna take us like triple the amount of time I thought. I don't know how old these tires are. I do know how old this car is. We're taking the back roads and we're taking it easy. Let me tell you about this car. So this has a two speed power glide in it. So it's all only got low gear and high gear. A Little bit ponderous, zero to 60. Um, back when this car came out, it probably had a zero to 60. They probably listed it in the 21 second range. Got an 80 horse, six cylinder air cooled Chevrolet engine. And it makes me happy. Happy, happy, happy. Yep. So we are currently driving through Wind River Canyon and it is beautiful. It's a good thing we got the lights working because we've got to go through a tunnel. Yeah, there's some lights. I don't always wear gloves, but when I do, they're Matt's off-road recovery gloves. Found it. We got this barbell close enough that we're ready to test fit it. Lizzie's going to tack it together. Here we go. I laid pretty bead, mostly. Now it's time to put it in the banana. Matt texted us a while back and said he was going over a big mountain pass and wouldn't have cell service for a while. Hope he's doing all right. Higher? I don't know what it is. Something smells, it smells like rubber. Did we just pop a, pop a tire? It smelled like burning rubber. smell is.
goodness. What? We lost a belt or s uh, seized the distributor is what we did. So we're only 50 miles into this trip and disaster has struck. It's going to be seized in here. This shaft is supposed to spin. So it seized and spun everything and did a number on it. So if we can get this apart by some miracle, then uh, we'll be back on the road because I can fix it. Fingers crossed. All right, this thing is done. We should do a final hood test. I think it's going to be fine. It works! So Matt came in over the weekend and welded all of this up inside here, but these barns logos that are cut in here are going to be a big open area for mud and sand to come through. So Lizzie's going to weld these plates on, close all that up. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah. See how that barns logo pops. Oh yeah. Look at that. All right, I got all the easy stuff taken off of this. There's still hard stuff to take off. I've got to get these roll pins out. And uh, then I can start hammering on this with a rock to get it apart. Then maybe I can find a stone to dress this with. Clean it all out, lube it all up, put it back together and we can get on our way. We finished this stuff up here. I have a list of stuff that I need to get at O'Reilly's and Scholson's, so I'm gonna head out and go do that. Okay, first stop is O'Reilly. Yes, I have U-joints, U-bolts, and then there's the part number for that other one that we need as well. I got the parts, now let's run to Scholson's. As per usual, I don't have anything I need to do this. So we're gonna improvise using caveman technique. Can you tap, tap on that? Go for it. So, since Tom didn't make us milkshakes today, I had to stop at Fizz and get me a frozen hot chocolate. If you haven't tried one, I highly suggest it because they are very, very delicious. Harder. It's coming out of there. I got what we needed at Schulzen's and now let's head back to the yard. Got all the tools you need? I'm missing pliers. I got everything. Oh, amazing. I'm a car guy, man. I re restore and be rebuild these things. Okay. Uh, Joel stopped by, Good Samaritan, saw us here on the wayside. And uh, he has tools, which is more than I can say for <laughs> myself. <laughs> but we're going to get, we just got this apart like that. Hold that for a second, Jamie. All right, now is where we get brutal because we have to hammer this out. I wish I had an arbor press. And we got to do it without damaging all this yeah. fragile stuff here. Trying to get the shaft out? Yeah, that's where it seized. So like I said, it seized and just spun everything. Okay. Got into the, the belt and everything. Okay. We're gonna get this back on the road. So you can see the shaft is all galled right there. That's where it seized up. So we're gonna smooth it out with this file. Joel, Joel has a file. We're gonna smooth this out as smooth as possible, wipe it down super clean, lube it up, and then put it all back together, cross our fingers and head down the road. So we're putting a fine stone to this now, literally. So Joel here, not only is he incredibly uh, prepared with tools, he's uh, he's owned a Corvair before. Is that a 64 coupe? Yep, 64 coupe. Uh, 67 International Scout, 47 Dodge, uh, one and a half ton truck, and a 47 
Studebaker. I used to have a shop down in Texas. A month after I opened my doors, I got hit by a deer while I was on my motorcycle and crushed oh. my chest and punctured a lung. And, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. And uh, so, needless to say, that was the end of my venture into restorations and uh, selling these classic cars and trucks. All right, we're ready for final assembly here. I'm gonna use our 2050 VR1 racing oil. Oh, that feels good. Okay, and then we need the whole tappy, 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 tappy right there. <laughs> With our hammer. Taps. Is it going? Well, I hope that stays in. It's going really easy. It's going really easy. <laughs> If you've never seen an angel, this is what one looks like right here. So that was amazing. I really, I really appreciate it. We got it back together. It does run. Maybe it'll run the whole the whole time and we'll get home. What do you think? We can only hope. Oh, here's a here's a life hack. If you don't have hand cleaner, you use lotion. It doesn't work, but it smells nice. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get this bolted up and on the way. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We are on the road again. Hallelujah. Just that was a tough time. one. Seas distributor. I don't know how long it's gonna last. I know my dwell is all over the place. For those of you that care about points dwell, I could see just by spinning it that it was not going to be the same. So Hefe and I were heading home after the end of a long day trying to be good employees and we accidentally bought six more MRAP axles. <laughs> three, three, only three. Yeah, only three. <laughs> <laughs> and tires, wheels and tires. Yeah. We'll show you what we got. Hopefully it was a good buy. <laughs> we're here with Ben from Off-Road Recovery and Towing and let's go see what you got. Okay. Well, I, I put a pre-bid on like 10 of them for as much as I could afford and somehow I ended up with seven. <laughs> so well that is awesome. Yeah. So you still got four left somewhere. Yeah. Your own projects, I yeah. guess. I got down there to pick them up and they wouldn't all fit on the trailer. So I took the first four and had to make another trip. And as we're coming back through I was like, Matt's got some big projects. He's uh he could probably use something like this. So I thought I'd stop in and see yeah. and here we are. Okay, these things are huge. We're gonna have to figure out something to do with them. They are enormous. I'll show you here. Size comparison. <laughs> one standard human. Oh man. Here's another one. And another one. Okay, these are a little different than what's on the record. These are made by Oshkosh. They're 18,000 pounds and they are full independent suspensions already built in. You just bolt this onto your frame. You might ask, what could they possibly build with those? I'll let Matt explain that to you. We got into Riverton last night about 9.30, got some food in our bellies and got some sleep. We did. It's just what we needed. <laughs> also, this morning I put out an APB to the Corvair forums. I'm like, hey, anybody got a distributor along our route? We're starting to get some comments in. So uh, hopefully we can meet up with somebody that has some spare parts because we need spare parts. In the meantime, we're going to Walmart and a, the auto parts store again. Yeah, we're gonna get a few load more up on supplies. A few more supplies and then head on down the road. So we're driving and looking ahead of us, we can see the mountain pass we have to go over. What do you think, Matt, just from looking here? It's looking pretty Arctic. 
So the speed limit on this road is 65, but we just passed a sign that advised that the speed be 55 miles an hour because elk are near the roadway. And I said, Can do. Well, here's a quick travel update. We're driving down the road, 50 miles an hour. Man, we are flying. And the old girl's just purring like a kitten. So while Tom is working on the seams hiller stuff on the banana, I pulled the more Varen to do some maintenance and it needs an oil change, so let's get right to it. I got it. There we go. So the engine in the Morvair is a 5.3 liter engine. This is what came in like a 2004 Silverado truck. I've got one in Dig Dug. It came out of a van, like a like a service van, an express van. The It was labeled the LM7 engine, and they're just super reliable. These things will run 200, 250,000 miles if you take care of them. I think the Morvair engine here has probably got like 125,000, 150,000 miles on it. And it's running strong. This thing runs great. Um, Matt would like a little bit more power than this, so I think he's looking at a six liter engine that'll just bolt right in. So that's, that's in the future, but not the near future. Pockets are done. There's one right down there, and there's one right down there. All right, we got them. They're pretty hot. Corvair, the original air fryer. There have never been station wagons like them before. All right, just before we get on the interstate, we're just gonna check everything. <laughs> I don't know what good that will do, but we're gonna do it. Let's do this. I'd like to maintain 55 on the interstate. There we go. All right, we're jumping on the interstate. Interstate 80. This is the most nervous I've been this entire trip. You probably heard Matt talk about how he does not like the sound of the banana. So we're finishing taking out the exhaust and we're gonna use this opportunity with this axle being replaced to redo the whole exhaust system. So right now we're just getting it out of there. I already undid this clamp right here. So now we just have to pry these things off of here and take out the rest of the exhaust. Oh yeah. Okay, should be able to slide out. There we go. So does he have another exhaust further up? I think he just had the three. This one and the two in the back. And then the down pipe? Yeah. yeah, so I think we're gonna build a new one from there back. All right, we are just south of Evanston, Wyoming. We just crossed the Utah border. We're practically home. Practically. Only 300 more miles to go. <laughs> I don't even know why I was nervous about the interstate. There's a few things that are better. The road's smoother, the lanes are wider, and it's easier for people to pass us. All right, it's 5.30 p.m. We've gone like 400 miles and change. It's been going pretty good. I can tell that I'm losing power and getting a little bit of surging. I'm not surprised with how loose that shaft should be in the distributor and how crazy, the, I mean, it's affecting the timing, it's affecting the quality of the spark. 
Um, I don't know if I should mess with it or just keep going, so I'm just gonna keep going. Do they hop a little bit? Um, they don't seem to be too bad. Hey, what's up? See, that looks awesome. But can you believe this is making it? Yes. Yeah, you look just super so happy. So it's had a really bad paint job on it. Well, it's not too at bad. At some point, but they didn't do any body work. It's just a, like a, a respray. It actually doesn't look terrible. Robbie, see you later. See ya. All right, we're just passing through Gunnison. Called my buddy Jace, said hey. Let's go to dinner, so that's what we're gonna do. Are you excited about dinner? I'm super excited. All right, I've still got to disconnect my tail lights because we don't know why we're not getting power back here yet. We just know that we're not. <laughs> Where'd you get that hat? From you, last time you came to my dad's house. <laughs> All I'm saying is All we're I'm about to eat. We're going home tonight too. <laughs> Really? I want That's to. That's a nice motel right there. <laughs> no, I want to go home. We're gonna, it's up for debate. Like, we're, we're, we're going home. We're going to debate this. <laughs> no Let's get some food. Jamie. All right, how was that, Jamie? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a new day. We're in Richfield, Utah. And you guessed it. We spent the night <laughs> with the 500 miles of driving yesterday and the sketchy nature of some of the functions of the Corvair we decided probably in our best interest. We're gonna get back in this that is rolling on these being powered by this being driven by me. Oh so close. We have contact. Did you see what we bought last night when you came in the yard? No. Okay, Hefe and I made a decision. We picked up some stuff. Let's go check it out. Right here. Check those out. What the world? That's like axle times 10. Those things are ginormous. So this really persuasive guy stopped by last night and we couldn't resist buying these. Matt said he had some big projects, so we got them. Oh my gosh. So a little birdie told me that Tom is down there at the shop running roughshod with a checkbook, buying whatever people come pedaling to the door. So I'm kind of excited to see what he bought, but also I might have to take the checkbook away from him. Oh, you know you're gonna like what he's got. Can't leave those guys alone for a day or two. Uh. These things are ginormous. In the beginning, we kept calling this trip a 650 mile trip, but it's turning into more like a 700 mile trip because of the route we're taking. We're not taking the, the quickest, straightest, uh, Google Maps route. We're taking the old highways through towns, like the way they used to twist through the country before the interstates. So, uh, so yeah, so this is a 700 mile trip. And it's been super fun. Road, driving through beautiful country in a beautiful automobile with my beautiful wife. Things are good. When I was a kid, I loved this drive because there's a place here called Big Rock Candy Mountain just like the song. And I'm hoping that it shows up on camera how striking it is. Because while this canyon's beautiful, the rocks don't have a lot of color, they're just gray. And then you come around a corner, and boom, this big rock candy mountain, just out of nowhere. So, I like buying the rock candies that you can get here and eat. Did you ever buy those when yep. you were little? I always got the rock candy. Too bad we're in a hurry. So by all indications, this car was owned and driven by one person its entire life. 
and I'm speculating this is the biggest longest trip this car has ever been on in its entire 62 years of being on this planet so that's kind of cool to think about she's doing it and I'm doing it too hey Matt what's the deal with you and Corvairs that's an excellent question I like them Got hey Jamie okay what's your deal with Corvairs well I didn't even know what a Corvair was until I met Matt hey Matt so what's the deal with this Corvair? Well, here's the answer to that. I'm gonna throw this in the survivor category because it hasn't been messed with. Nothing's been replaced. It has had a repaint, which kind of bumped me out a little bit, but it's all here. It's all, it, like almost every original piece this car came with is still here. Even under this carpet that they've got on the front, the original rubber floor mat is there. It's all worn, it's weather worn, aged, and it's aged, but it's all here. And I think that's cool. I, I like that. I'm not going to modify this. I'm going to drive it just like it is. I'm going to fix what needs to be fixed. Um, if there's something broken and it doesn't bug me, we'll just leave it broken and just drive it. I think that'll work. We'll get our use out of it. Yeah, it's a nice car. It's got 60,000 miles on it. I don't know what to do about this headliner though. Like it's pretty raggedy. So it's like the part of the car that kind of stands out and looks ugly. And it's not it's not worn in a cool way. So I'm gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do. If I could I'll put an original headliner back in it or live with this one. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Alright, we're headed down the canyon to the home of the Fab Rats. I did not call Paul and tell him we're dropping in. This is a, this is a completely unannounced. Look who's visit. waiting. <laughs> so, a couple things I didn't know about this car. Uh-huh. One, it's had a repaint. That bugs me a little bit. Oh, yeah. But it was tastefully done with no body work. I like it. Those are bias plies. <laughs> She's oh. a little road wild? I have no idea how old they are. <laughs> But they made it 650 miles. Well, then they're perfect. All right, so Hunter wanted to see the motor, and he looked pretty antsy to get the hood popped, so I popped it for him. <laughs> Where is it? It's not here. Like, actually. Yep, it's actually not there. It's actually it's not the there. or what? Yeah. That's this is cool. How, you, GM made this car. What in the heck? Yeah, th these are cool cars. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you're just doing like regular maintenance, like changing the oil and stuff, they have this little hatch here so you can get in here and check the oil. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is our little wiring so that we have tail lights. I don't know why they're not working, <laughs> but but he doesn't have the right license plate light. So I just yep. cut that and we just, we feed it directly. So this is the, this is the exact thing the more varies. Exactly. Yeah, this is the same so, car. Same mirror. Wow. When you should drag that one out. So that's air cooled. Pancake six, six. Pancake six. Look at that belt. 540 yeah. degrees of rotation. Mm -hmm. They were trying to get a second car in every home that the wife could drive. So these were designed for women specifically. And it wasn't very long before. Makes sense why right? likes yeah. it now, maybe. Ne <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> so then so then but that market was failed. Um, it wasn't they didn't hit that market. They good built at all. these for five years, for ten years, oh, 10. sixty to sixty-nine. Oh, okay. But they, they started out with this big fleet of utilitarian. This year there was eleven or twelve or thirteen separate models. Oh, There's wow. trucks, vans, station wagons. That's crazy. Um, coupes and sedans. The convertible wasn't in yet, but but that was the thing. The market that was buying these wanted the sports. Car. What kind of mileage did you get driving? Get twenty-seven. Her? That's insane. Oh. That's a, that's a like 50 miles an yeah. hour, but but that was the speed limit then. Yeah. yeah, you know what's crazy is back in the day there wasn't room for all the kids, so the kids would sit on this, like they'd ride in Still the back the of that on top yeah. of the motor. Isn't it, that it's crazy? Got all its, that's safe. It's got all its pieces. <laughs> all right, we had a nice visit there with Paul and Hunter and Ben and Grandma Lolly. 
Stole a Mountain Dew out of Paul's fridge when he wasn't looking, and now we're heading on down the road. I know. All right, we just passed somebody here that looks like they might need a little bit of help. We're gonna see what we can do to help them. That's that. That was awesome. Okay. Hopefully we're not stuck now that we pulled on the side of the road. <laughs> Come on, old girl. Uh oh. Woo! Woohoo! Okay. We are back on the road. <laughs> Okay, we're all finished up down here. We've done all the welding. We did the seam sealer. Now I'm going to paint. Yeah, we're all painted up. Matt should be here really soon. He's driving down from Paul's right now. Should be an hour or two out. We're going to find a few more things to do. All right, we're just rolling through Hilldale, and we decided we should probably stop and show Rudy the new rig. That's a good idea. Jamie, back to you. It's all closed up though. Come here. Come here, Higgy. Oh, we've good, good bud. That's right. That looks good though. But everything else is original, even under this carpet, it's got the original rubber, rubber, and it's not rusted through. Wow. Look at the back panel door panels though. They're in pretty good shape. Oh wow, those are those are like new. It's even got the the hinge cover. Yeah. Intact and slightly cracked. Yep, all the pieces <laughs> that it should have, it has. Bye. Drive safe. You know these things are unsafe at any speed. At any speed. Uh, unsafe. Okay. Okay, bye Ray. See you later. All right, we are 20 minutes from the shop. I have a pretty strong suspicion this old girl is gonna take us all the way home. So I'm pretty excited to have it back here. I've, I've wanted a survivor wagon. Like this is just something that I wanted and I really appreciate Jamie getting this for me. Hefe organizing it. This is just amazing, super cool. I think she's got some real potential. Drive me around for years and years. Now he won't steal my vehicles. I won't walk out in the morning and wonder where my car is. Maybe. All right, we're rolling down the hill into Hurricane right now. I just got a call from Hefe and they are meeting for lunch at Alfredo's. I'm thinking, hey, I could go for some lunch right now because it's lunchtime. So we're going to meet the crew there at Alfredo's, grab some lunch, and then head out to the yard and show this car off. There's Jefe's Bronco. We're at the right place. All right, look what we're eating. <laughs> original door panels. It's, oh, got, wow. it's got the original rubber floor mats, but they've put other mats on top of them. What? That is awesome. But I, I just want to keep it like this and leave it survivor. If you start, if you fix one thing, then everything else will look bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So this is pedal to the floor. So I'd say we're at like 60, 66 percent power right now. This is so comfortable even off-road. Dude, it's, it's quite... 
quite comfy. Good morning, Ed. I thought we were going to have to go on a recovery. The road back. 700 miles. That's a long trip. That's a nice one. That's like you. Same as you got, it, isn't it? Yeah. Hey. It has a vibe, like a feel to it when you're riding in it. There's certain cars you get in, and it just has like a, a different presence. Just even rolling in the back seat of that thing, it's like I want to go take a cruise and go to get a burger or something. Pacific but, Coast Highway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty fancy. It's been a while since I've sat in a Lakewood wagon like this. Oh yeah. Sick. Show me what you got, Matt. Made of metal. Metal, huh? That's all they had back then. Yeah. Is this gonna be another more of air? Yeah. Is this is this totally stock height and everything? Like it's sagged. It's 62 years of those springs holding up. So it's sagging. It's probably sagged an inch and a half. Fun ride, yeah. good time. Yeah, it's a nice driving, it's a nice driving rig. It looks good. It's got cookies oh, in it. Yeah. Well, we're finally back. We're gonna get this thing licensed up and legal. I'm gonna try to find some vintage plates to run on it. We'll just take care of it and keep it the time capsule it is. And now we're gonna go modify some other things that we're not keeping as time cap capsules. We're going to modify <laughs> every square inch of them. Oh, nice. I like it. So, uh, you do need to come check out your new axles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to show you what happened. This really persuasive guy came and talked us into buying these. <laughs> He's a super good salesman. I was talking to you about this earlier. I left these guys alone too long. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We've been talking about doing some big stuff, Matt, and these came available, so we thought we need to get these. They were here. They were right here. The guy was here. He had a trailer. They were on it. This is ridiculous. These things are ginormous. Yeah. We'll have to figure it So, Tom, are you saying this was an impulse buy? Kind of. I've got to come up with some use for these that makes sense because we can't just build something ridiculous. It has to be something functional. Can it be a little bit ridiculous? It's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit ridiculous. Okay. Okay. All right. Let us know in the comments what you think we should build out of these ridiculous axles. <laughs> Well, I couldn't be happier, and thank you so much for watching.